Oftentimes in women's ministry in the local church, we, we talk about Titus 2 being, being a key passage that lays out some of the basic principles for mentoring and relationships among women. I wanted to, to actually read a few verses from Titus 2 just to anchor our discussion here. This is Titus 2, verse 1. But as for you, teach what accords with sound doctrine. And then part of verse 3, older women are to teach what is good. And so train the young women to love their husbands and children, to be self-controlled, pure, working at home, kind, and submissive to their own husbands, that the word of God may not be reviled. Blair, what's the most important thing you've done or experienced in mentoring friendships? Hmm. Yeah, I mean, um, even, I mean, the Lord has used so many ladies in my life to hmm. mentor me and I would say the most important thing, even before that, was someone sharing the gospel with me. Mm. So it um, wasn't a lady, this was a guy um, at an informal Bible study who shared Christ with me. Um, even though I was raised in the church, had a Christian background, um, just, yeah, out of stepped out in faith and out of love, pressed in and, and shared it, and the Lord used that mm -hmm. to transform my life, uh, to make me born again. And then after, like, coming to the Lord, then, ladies who've come alongside of me to teach me, you know, when I was single, thinking I may be called to singleness, but it was a lot of fear about marriage. Mm. Uh, I remember there was a mentor in college um, who walked me through that process mm. of how do you deal with those fears? Mm. Um, you know, then getting married, you know, and having those fears of, am I, you know, yeah, am I, what's gonna happen? You know, because I didn't have many models of marriage. And I was able to pull from the church, you know, from ladies in the church to walk and say, you know, this is how you are to be a wife. Mm -hmm. And then this is how you are to be a mother. So mm -hmm. the Lord has been just faithful to use mm -hmm. godly women that, you know, that person at the beginning, but then godly women to mm -hmm. uh, help me to be led and pointed towards the gospel in my life. Was it oftentimes, were you the one who would approach the older women or did they approach you? I was often the one approaching them. Mm. Yeah. So. I think I always wanted that, like, that older woman to come and say, let me just swoop you up and, you know, and I didn't have that. So I just had to go and, mm -hmm. and search for them, you know, to say, can, basically, can I just sit and observe you as you homeschool your children? Can mm -hmm. I watch you, you know, as you, how do you prepare meals and, um, and all of that. <laughs> so I was seeking them out um, mm -hmm. and they're, yeah, very kind to let me, let me do that. Did you ever have an older woman? Because I hear this sometimes. I don't. I don't know what y'all think. But do you have you ever heard an older woman tell you no? Did you ever ask someone to mentor you? Mm -hmm. and... I haven't. Yeah. Have you? Christy? Yeah. Yeah, I have actually. And that mm -hmm. I think for me, um, that experience, um, the Lord has used to help me mm -hmm. in my uh, mentoring discipleship of women. So um, when I was brand new Christian, I knew that I needed someone walking alongside mm -hmm. me. I needed a mentor. And so um, I asked actually two godly ladies in our church. Mm -hmm. And uh, we were friends already. We served together already. We kind of started the church, you know, together with our families. We're all, you know, kind of the, um, the startup for this church. So we had been serving together already. And both of them, when I asked if they would mentor me, said no. And they Did they both, give you a good reason or, no. or they just said, no. oh, no. that's <laughs> so, discouraging? So yeah. what they said, um, both in various ways said, you know, basically they said, I'm too busy. Mm -hmm. okay. um, and at the time, I didn't know that it was an excuse. And so it crushed me. <laughs> mm -hmm. And, I, you know, I just was going home in tears, like oh. crushed that I could, I didn't, you know, the two probably godliest women that I knew. Mm -hmm. um, you know, didn't want to spend time with me. Mm -hmm. Years later, fast forward, mm -hmm. um, in having conversations with those women later, mm -hmm. they both said two things. One, I was scared mm -hmm. out of my mm -hmm. mind when mm -hmm. you asked me. Mm -hmm. And number two, I had no idea to do what you were asking me to do. Mm -hmm. So um, that experience, Tom, so before we had the conversation years later, um, that kind of rejection I felt, I think the Lord used to um, burden in my heart mm. a desire to help other women in whatever way I could. If, and so I just made a promise to the Lord at that time, said, Lord, if you ever bring anybody into my life who would ask me mm. to mentor them, I would never say no. Mm. And so by God's grace over the past 17 years, however, mm. um, 
you know, I've been able to say, to say yes. Mm -hmm. And so, um, so yeah, that, I think that fear, it can be stifling for a lot of older women mm -hmm. and also not feeling equipped mm -hmm. or able to, to, to do that. Mm -hmm. So um, my first discipling relationship, a young lady, college student, she was with Impact Movement mm -hmm. um, through Crew, and so it was Camps Crusade at the time. And <laughs> she did just what you said. Mm -hmm. She said, um, hey, you know, I'm a new uh, wife. Mm -hmm. She was expecting her first child. Mm -hmm. And she said, can I just come to your house like while you're cooking dinner for your family and mm -hmm. we just chat? And I was like, well, I can do that. Right. I mean, yeah. Right. I'm gonna yeah. Cook as long as you can, can, chat. can you cut right. some vegetables too? Exactly. Yeah. Right. yeah. So we did that. And that was um, what the Lord used to kind of, mm -hmm. you know, start me off in hmm. mentoring. That's so awesome. I think sometimes we underestimate just how the Lord can use that, just of mm -hmm. sitting and observing someone yeah. else's life. Mm -hmm. I remember as, you know, a new believer observing a family do worship together. Mm -hmm. And I was like, you know, I wasn't raised doing that. Mm -hmm. So to be able to mm -hmm. see that yeah. and, you know, to see it now, my husband certainly is able to do that, but mm -hmm. to incorporate that into our home, mm -hmm. you know, what a blessing to see that yeah. in the body of Christ. Yeah. yeah, I can see how that would be so helpful to, if you haven't grown up in that setting to actually what does it look like to be a Christian mother? Right. And then to watch it yeah. flesh out. Yeah, And we're just in a different context, right? So, you know, 30, 40, 50 years ago, mm -hmm. grandma would be out on the porch shelling peas, shucking corn. That's mm -hmm. a good you know, point. And you'd be out there shucking corn and shelling peas. Right. Whether with you grandma. liked it or not. Mm -hmm. Whether you liked it or not. <laughs> and grandma would be <laughs> imparting mm -hmm. her wisdom, mm -hmm. you know, and you would sit and you would listen and you would ask questions. Mm -hmm. We're in a different context where we're not communal like that, right. you know, we're kind of spread out. And so we have to find other ways, uh, creative ways of fostering that kind of nurturing, mm -hmm. mothering uh, relationship, I think. And yet I think because we are in a different age, women express such hunger for sure. that kind of communal no. yeah. mm -hmm. environment, that mm -hmm. relational environment. And so there's so much opportunity mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. simply live our lives publicly, inviting women in to mm -hmm. see what it looks like to follow Jesus and live lives of repentance. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what does it look like to lean on Him for all things? Mm -hmm. Well, those are some wonderful thoughts. Thank you both.